Good afternoon, everybody. Today, this is the second webinar that we are doing about smart cities. I hope uh, many of the participants today have had a chance to watch the webinar which was on April 15th, which was about communication technologies that are there in the new uh, age, which are being used by telecom companies for connecting Internet of Things. Today we are going to move beyond the communication technologies and talk about the new paradigms of telecom companies, how they can extend themselves to sensing, tracking, measuring and analyzing various aspects of smart cities. I'm going to take a couple of slides to explain what we do at Paya Smart Cities and then we will go straight into the talking points about today, which is about the new paradigms of telecom companies. So we at Gaia Smart Cities are a next generation telecom solutions company. We are bringing together various telecom technologies, electronics, communication and IT technologies together to create a platform for Internet of Things and low power sensor networks, which will create a heterogeneous network platform for all kinds of devices to get connected to the internet. We hope that this network which we will build along with our telecom partners will allow various startup and established companies to connect their devices and share information which will allow smart cities to exist seamlessly between various cities. We have three lines of business. One is in solution consulting and projects. We do M2M solutions, we do VPC projects. Uh, we are also getting into industrial automation and SCADA projects. And we have taken a couple of assignments to do electronic design and integrating different technology platforms into our IoT network. Simultaneously, we are also building a network for low power sensor networks which will work seamlessly with established 2G, 3G, 4G networks as well as wired and Wi-Fi networks in the cities. And we are going to create a virtualization layer on top which will allow the devices to seamlessly connect to this network. And the last part of our business is managed services. We understand that what we are building is highly sophisticated and very new and cutting edge. So therefore we are getting into the business of supporting our customers end to end including running these operations for them and hand holding it till it becomes stable in their existing operations. So our line of business are smart city networks and smart city solutions which we are going to conceptualize, design, build, operate and help our customers monetize it such that a new economy on internet of things and smart cities become real in the near future. There is a shift that is happening in the network business models over the last few years and this is what this webinar is all about. Telecom companies started off in the data space have started off as a typical ISP providing bandwidth and this bandwidth was used by various M2M providers to provide connectivity to devices. Soon we had telecom companies which were providing voice, video, data, mobile, all packaged into a service provider and these are today's typical telco customers. Any telco that you take in the world is in this space. They are providing bundled voice, video, data and mobile. Some are providing it unbundled, some are providing it with bundles. We are shaping the next generation of telecom companies which is going to be a personalized and adaptable digital services provider which is not only going to do data and voice, but is going to provide platforms for smart energy, smart homes, smart cars, smart offices, smart industry and smart health and many more that is going to come in the next few years. So we think that the next generation of telecom companies is going to be one that switches services, intelligent and smart services instead of just voice video data, which has been the traditional domain of telecom companies. We understand that this is the future. So typically when we create this Gaia grid, we hope to connect cars, devices, factories, hospitals, medical devices, stores, homes, traffic and coordinate all of these where they need to be coordinated and make it autonomous when they need to be autonomous. So this is 
a solution which is going to allow the operational technologies and the information technologies to come together. Come together in a seamless way. Come together where they are sharing data, sharing networks and sharing information which can be used by these different paradigms and domains to become smart. The sharing economy of information is going to what make our city smart in the future and we hope to be a partner in this ecosystem that is going to come up in the future. So our overall perspective is to connect all kinds of devices from water to transport, power, gas through multiple types of networks through our IoT platform and therefore create a network of networks and we are going to have multiple functional solutions like smart meters, asset management, tracking, CCTV surveillance, report monitoring which we are going to white label and give it to end customers as a B2C product. We are going to also provide B2B services for service providers, resellers and also various research partners who are going to look at data and look at how to analyze this data. So when I look at the new paradigm for telcos, it is not about selling SIM cards or a broadband connection. The device on the other side is not as intelligent as a phone plus a human being. The device is a machine and connecting machines and making them perpetually connected is a challenge today. Addressing the integration of different electronics other than a phone or a computer is what we need to address collecting data and then processing it. Other than phone and data CDRs, the telecom companies are very good at doing the phone and data CDRs, a lot of it. But there is a lot of other data that the devices are collecting and this is very context sensitive. So we have to provide context sensitive services and also therefore the upside is context sensitive pricing. So when I look at tele telecom companies, I see them venturing towards this new paradigm and if they don't we companies like ours are going to come in and help the telecom companies create this ecosystem create this ecosystem with other players in the market I'm going to take the next few slides to talk about how the telecom companies are going to move into this ecosystem of a smart city so there are five different areas that need to be looked at. The components are the sensors. Sensors are things that measure, count, track. They see things directly or indirectly and telling us about the state of movement, state of health, state of energy, location of anything. A meter, a device, a machine. We have got collectors. Collectors that help collect the data that bring the signals back to the brain. I'm going to visualize the city as a human being and look at the analogies. These collectors are like our nervous system. They collect the data from the sensors and they weave it through a fabric of the city, the roads, houses, buildings, trees, people, vehicles. And different sensors sometimes need different kind of collectors. And then you've got the thinker. Thinker is the brain of the system. Brain is where the information is processed and the city decides what to do. Sometimes this thing is distributed very close to the environment and we're going to talk about these in the next few slides in detail. The thinkers take into account how it sensed and collected the information. It mixes the data with previous history. It forms a very quick opinion and response. And then you've got distributors and we'll talk about distributors which take the information back from the brain back to a set of actuators. Actuators which act on the system. They act on the information of the brain and change the state of whatever is being measured. For example, if you look at traffic, we can measure the flow of traffic which is coming from cars and this can come from a web of different information. For example, Google can tell us, tell us where cars are, where the traffic is and the actuators are the traffic lights which need to be changed on a different network. Then you've got analyzers. Analyzers are above the system looking at the whole ecosystem of sensors, collectors, thinkers and actuators and they provide an open feedback loop so that we can change the thinkers, how the, change, the thinkers think. The analyzers can change how the collectors collect and they can also change how the sensors sense. The analyzers 
or somebody who is looking at the meta picture of the whole system. So in future we are going to see the sensors, collectors, thinkers and analyzers and the environment providing a closed loop system. And this closed loop system can operate isolated way or we can have the analyzer sending information back to all of them to change it differently. So the closed loop has, has a free feedback mechanism and the analyzer allows this mechanism to change over time and this is what is going to make our systems smart. Just having a sensor, collector, thinker, distributor, actuator are good design systems. They are closed loop systems but they are not smart. They are doing what they have been told to do. But if you have an analyzer which is constantly analyzing and changing what is happening, it is learning, that is when we are going to have a smart system. We are going to come back to this diagram after every example and see how telcos play in this ecosystem of information value chain. So the new paradigm for telcos is to move up and down this information ecosystem and provide services which allow the environment to be managed and understood better. So a smart city is a city that is able to understand and read these systems, read this information that is available and be able to watch what is going on better than they did before. There is a lot of skepticism in the market about smart cities, whether it is ever going to become real, whether India is ever going to be able to do it, but I think we are already on that journey. We are already measuring a whole lot of things in our environment today and what is smart is going to be able to use this information and take better decisions. We need these sensors to have a common information infrastructure. We need a better communication infrastructure in place so that these sensors can communicate with each other. And we need a better and more efficient way to aggregate and process this data in each of these cities and do it in a common way such that the cities don't have to invent the wheel as they move from one city to the other. As human beings, we have only seen a trillionth of the light waves that may give us a perception of the city that we are in. As we add more and more data, we are going to see a, the city in a very different light. As we collect traffic movement data, we are going to be able to see the city and be able to analyze where people congregate, when people congregate and how to use this data to provide better services, provide better bus services, taxi services so, so that we can move people better, we can evacuate people better, we can understand our movement, we can understand how water is going through by understanding where water is leaking, we can understand the environment a lot better if we start sensing our cities in a different way and I am absolutely optimistic that we are going, we are already marching in this space whether the government's smart city program succeeds or not, every department today, every company today has put in a lot of information infrastructure to collect information and start seeing way beyond what we were seeing in the past. So I've got a lot of opportunities that I'm seeing coming from the industrial automation space, in healthcare, in traffic, in water, in, in um, defense, in all kinds of other spaces where information is being used very creatively. We talked a little bit about this in our last webinar but I think it is important to understand sensors a little bit and how it is being used and how telecom companies can come in. If I I take a look at sensors, there are a myriad of sensors coming up and the whole advent of MEMS which is micro mechanical, electro mechanical systems is allowing sensors to do amazing things these days. We are able to measure gas, light, pressure, temperature, humidity, moisture, acceleration, vibration, corrosion, acoustic emissions, RFID sticker printed. And these sensors are allowing us to see what is in our environment, what is in our factories, what is in our water systems, what is in our houses, homes, 
and this is allowing us to control things better it is allowing us to measure things differently if you take an average cell phone today a mobile phone it has got a lot of sensors which has got the Wi-Fi it has got GPS Bluetooth NFC cameras in the front and back light sensors touch screen proximity barometers magnetometers gyroscopes accelerometers and you have seen a lot of applications which are already using these sensors to come up with very very accurate measurement of what is happening in the environment now what are we doing with these pieces of data today these pieces of data are going into these private applications and people are using it for creating smarter services for you soon cities will be able to use this to track where you are tra traveling so that we can provide better services they can see the temperature around you the location your, how fast you are going and therefore measure the traffic speed various kinds of services can be provided once we know some of these items on your existing mobile phones and then if you expand it by providing other sensors you will be able to harness a lot of this information to provide better services at a city level and solve a lot of urban problems in the wide area let me give you an example which I had given last time you can take a simple electricity meter or a car and you can call it a product which was existing for the last many many years once you retrofit the smart meter and make it digital and start reading the information from it you have got a smart product and we call anything smart which becomes digital and provide you with that information and when you have a smart connected product this meter is now providing information not only to you but also it is providing that information to the service provider so that you are able to manipulate the data and give you a bill it is able to tell the larger ecosystem how much electricity is being consumed at an aggregate level in the vehicle example a smart connected vehicle is able to predict how much of traffic is in the on the roads along with telling you what to do so if you take a look at the smart connected meters we can take the same information of smart metering and come up with various solutions for smarter grid where we are able to do demand management energy management distribution automation customer revenue management outage and alarm and when you look at the smarter city we are able to do the same metering we'll be able to do building automation emergency services electric vehicles all of these things require smart metering and when I look at telecom companies I am seeing them being able to provide a service just not a connectivity service but going beyond it and providing the entire framework in which various meters and sensors can be connected and provide a service of open data such that various other applications can be built by other companies if I take a look at this from the vehicular example you will able to see fleet management moving into intelligent transport electric tolls telematics and various other services now if I take a look at these sensors telecom companies come in in a big way to create the, the collectors and the distributors the collectors are networks which allow the sensors to communicate we have got home area networks which typically use short range standards and operate in frequencies in the ISM band or they use standards like Zigbee, Dash, Wi-Fi to allow devices to connect over 10 or 15 or 20 to 50 meters and then you've got wide area networks wide area networks allow for communication between utility and customers each it allows the home area network to reach out beyond the the home and allow the devices to connect on a wider area platform such that we can have more sensors connected on the same network and we are able to share information fairly easily between these systems and then you've got field area networks which connect various smart grid and other uh, such utility platforms
platforms, networks which are being built today, some by utilities and some by telecom companies and some by private operators to achieve the connectivity options required for sensors to connect to the internet. To give you an example of NSC, you've got smart energy meters, we can do prepaid meters through that, we are able to do data acquisition and control. We have got something where you can swipe your phone and get information about tourist spots. You can do car parks in NFC. There's a lot of applications of NFC, of RFID, of many other such solutions which are coming up in a wide smart city domain which uses sensors and communication and applications in the back. I'm going to just give a quick example of what a sensor node is and how it connects to the data network. A sensor node essentially is a, is a processor, it's got a radio interface, it has got an analog to digital converter which connects various sensors, it's got a memory and a power supply and that in totality makes a sensor node. Now there have been various processors, people have come up with various radio interfaces like we talked about Zigbee, we talked about NFC, we talked about GSM or LoRa or Zigfox or various other radio interfaces which allow a sensor node to connect to the backend interface. So this is how we see various sensor nodes coming up and we are, I am seeing a lot of innovation that is happening in companies here in India which are working on different kinds of sensor nodes connecting to various kinds of radio interfaces coming up with creative solutions which are going to solve smart city problems in the urban space. And we are aggregating a lot of these solutions to bring it to market sensibly and reliably over a common infrastructure. To give you an example of water distribution, it is not just about putting sensors to do water metering. Right from the time water is sourced from the well or from reservoirs or from rivers, there's a lot of sensors which can be used for water quality monitoring, for measuring the, the, the content, the level of water and monitoring the leaks that are in the distribution network. And finally, to put meters in your house which is going to measure how much you're consuming. These days there are talks in almost all the smart city projects. It completes the entire ecosystem of water management. It is an automated meter infrastructure, AMI, which takes into account end-to-end -end of water distribution and supply to all our cities. This is getting more and more attention these days given the severe shortage of water all across the country and the various cities and villages which are today parched. We need to come up with better measurement of our water table. We need to come up with better measurement of the quality of water that is there today so that we can lead a better healthy and sustainable life. I think water and water management is going to become very important in the near future which has already become very important in now and is going to assume a lot of significance in the future for human beings living on this planet. So we better pay a lot of attention to this whole space of water distribution. We can, as we talked about different kinds of sensors, we can look at pressure, water level, vibrations, and these are sensors which can be placed in various parts of the, the pipeline and are able to provide us the services that we talked about. And again, going back to what was there in the information value chain, we can have various sensors which the telecom companies have been traditionally in the collector distributor network and then in the thinker analyzer space there's a lot of people working about including us looking at water analytics into looking at how to moderate this data, how to collect and analyze this data and do prepaid water. The actuator is there to stop the flow of water and to control the amount of wastage that is there in the system. If you take a look at pipeline monitoring in the, in the gas space, there are various technologies which are being used to save and to monetize 
the flow of gas across large pipelines across the world today. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the technology, but this is what is being implemented across the world for pipeline monitoring without using people. Moving on to electricity distribution, there is a lot of work that has happened in smart grids across the world and in India we have launched several pilots which are putting smart grid solutions here. That also requires a lot of sensors in our distribution chain. It is looking at our substations, looking at the poles, looking at voltage drops across between poles so that we can tap into the non-revenue uh, information from the poles which tells us about how much loss we have got in our distribution of the of power across the country and we can plug these holes very very easily to become energy sufficient across. We actually are energy sufficient. We need to make sure that the demand and supply is met in the same place. Smart grids are also going to allow various PV photovoltaic cells and, and, and solar and wind energy, renewable energy technologies to be plugged into the, the grid and be able to measure it in real time such that we are not in, we run, we don't run into situations where there is a mismatch between what is required in the grid and what is coming from the renewable energy sources. This requires better instrumentation and better integration of that information. We if you take a look at the sensors that are available today, there are various ones which are providing us with information about uh, the loss between the energy poles and these are being used today by these various companies to, to come up with understanding of how the grid is doing. Now all of these projects are facing a lot of problems in the telecom side of the sense. The GSM based collection or mesh network based collection systems have not been able to scale and provide reliable connectivity options. So I think the telecom companies need to move up the value chain and again provide better collection and distributions for distribution technology, sorry, to the power industries so that they are able to manage the smart grid better. Again, going back to the sensors, distributors, collectors, we see telecom companies coming up with better solutions for these utilities and providing services which will make it reliable. It has been a problem all across the world and which needs to be fixed right now. And we are seeing alternate technologies being suggested across the US and Europe for allowing utilities to deal with this situation of unreliable telecom connectivity for these solutions. I have been talking to smart transport uh, people and smart building solutions where we are having the same problem of connectivity. So I think if I take a look at smart building and homes that is we can have all kinds of appliances which are connecting directly to a home gateway or they can be connecting directly to the grid and providing us information about how our, our appliances are doing. If I take a look at energy sensing in our home, we can have direct distributed direct sensing where a sensor is placed on each appliance. These measurements are a lot more accurate but they are expensive because we have got to put nodes, sensor nodes on each appliance. Or you can have a single point sensing where you can have a consumption pattern across the house and then you come up with analytics which tell you how different devices are doing. Or you can have smart breaker, circuit breakers which give you some information about how different zones of your houses are doing so that you are able to come up with a better understanding of how smart, build, smart homes or smart buildings are operating. So we need to find these uh, intermediate solutions which will make it cost effective as well as reliable for the people in the houses as well as for the utilities to track where this whole technology is going. There is a lot of correlation with, that we need to do in the back end. People will say weather and it is correlated to weather. There is a lot of data processing which needs to happen 
which allow the term weather to be used. So when I look at weather and uh, the analytics which is required in the back, it is not just one sensor, it is a, a set of sensors which need to be put in so that we can come up with the paradigms of weather. And these will help us to predict the consumption of all kinds of utilities like power, like transportation, like gas across the city or water. Again, we'll, we'll skip this slide when we talk about appliances connected with sensors and local hosts. We talked about it and these things are coming up today. Lots of companies, smart companies which have come up with technologies which allow uh, wired and wireless networks to allow these appliances to get connected over the internet. Wi-Fi has been the typical uh, solution in, in various recent uh, devices because the ubiquity of Wi-Fi across various uh, houses as well as in public hotspots. Smart buildings have been talked about and people talk about what about smart buildings. One of the very interesting use cases about smart buildings is about evacuation and ensuring that everybody is out of the system. There's a lot of technology which is coming up today so that we are able to manage smart building evacuation. Fire and safety is the other area. Monitoring bridges and seismic activity requires a lot of sensors, a lot of technology that can be put in today so that we don't have collapses like we saw that happened in West Bengal or many other places. A lot of things cause uh, disasters to happen. People, there can be corrosion, can be strain, stresses, deformation, temperature, humidity, oxidation. And if we analyze the situation that happened in West Bengal, real, uh, in Kolkata recently, we will see a combination of all of these things which with a set of simple sensors and technology would have given us adequate information beforehand that something was going to happen because these things corrode and this bridge has been was being built over a long period of time and it had its own stresses and strains and deformation that happened because of bad uh, quality material maybe or oxidation and corrosion that happened over time as this bridge was being built over a long period of time and coupled with that the issue of temperature and humidity all of these things today are parameters which lead to uh, thing and now if we can come up with better ways to sense all of this and take the, temp the data <coughs> back and analyze it and create a service which can be very cheaply installed across the country it becomes something which is very very valuable for an economy like India but it needs to be done uniformly across the country instead of being done in patches because the cost effectiveness of such a solution will become a, will become a barrier if we do it in a one-off case. Again, this is another example of uh, detection in bridges and seismic activities. If I take a look at intelligent transport, Today's intelligent transport is very, very limited to managing street lights which are coordinated. In a lot of places where they say we are doing intelligent street lighting, it is all about just coordination. Unless you measure, add the traffic information to it reliably and sensibly over time and keep it dynamic and keep it real time, you don't have intelligent transport. I was just in a meeting last uh, this week where they talked about tens of such solutions across the country where the problem that they have faced is the telecom infrastructure. It is not the availability of sensors, it is not the availability of the systems in the back, but the reliability of telecom infrastructure in the country which is preventing some of these solutions to come to life and helping you and us as citizens of this country enjoy the fruits of this technology. Many, many projects have been done and have been abandoned because we are not able to reach the device back. We are not able to reliably say when the device is not working, including the BRTS in Delhi where a lot of information was just abandoned. A lot of information in various other BRTS systems are abandoned because or ITSs are abandoned because the systems are not working reliably. We have to couple 
we have to read traffic information. There are various kinds of in sensors which are available today to read traffic information, including RFID, Hall effect sensors, induction loop, wave motions, video cameras, and all of these things have their pluses and minuses. And people have come up with absolutely innovative solutions in this space which can give us enough information and if backhauled properly, we'll be able to provide intelligent transport across all our cities and reduce our congestion and traffic and pollution problems in cities across the country. Again, another area where we have seen devices, sensors, which can save a lot of lives is in law enforcement and firefighting. The availability of sensors and backhaul and IT systems have been used and can be used reliably and uniformly like a telco solution across the country to provide uh, alarm buttons, to provide sensors on the bodies of firemen who go out in these blazing uh, fire situations to provide information to our uh, controllers of these emergencies so that they can fight these systems, fight these emergencies better and to our law enforcement agencies and our policemen so that they can use this information to catch the culprit instead of trying to harass everybody on the streets trying to catch that one person who is the culprit. So better information gathering for law enforcement will help focus the law enforcement agencies to better catch criminals and not try to subject all of us into a reg uh, enforcement regimen. Telcos need to move towards this urban uh, digital narrative. I have I found this uh, construct very information uh, informative yesterday, where telcos are already gathering a lot of data today from sensors, and this information from sensors and information from people, people from their websites, people from their mobile phones. And this together is creating a lot of information to solve a lot of urban problems. We have seen this information coming in really handy when services like Uber have come on board where you're taking the person on one side and the information from the car on the other side and putting it together to come up with a very innovative service which has changed how transportation and shared economy has come together. We can do this with a lot of different systems today and telcos are highly poised to move into this larger urban digital narrative. We can take these IoT sensors and this mobile wave, create data stores and stories and create an integration platform for analysis and processing of these stories and allow this open data to be available to lots of people to create solutions. We need to create a monetizing framework so that data collected from the sensors and data collected from the people in a very secure way is made available for our administration, is available for our utilities, is available for our businesses to provide better services. It is available for the residents, visitors to create services that make their life easy. It assists, it alerts, and it helps in plan. So I think we need to move beyond core telecom and just looking at the connectivity options to move into this larger urban digital narrative. The market for all of these solutions is across the board from smart environment and industries, from forest fires, air pollution, earthquakes, to tracking motorbikes, cars, bicycles, kids, pets, to agriculture, smart agriculture, irrigation control, sensing, smart metering, we talked about the smarter city solutions like traffic sensors, parking, street lighting, infrastructure monitoring, trash and waste collection. All of these solutions are already coming on board today. What we need to do is to create a better information sharing framework, which telcos can do very easily to allow these sensors to connect easily and share information between each other. Again, I spoke about this last time and I'm going to speak about this again today. 
that there are a lot of problems and we need to be aware of these problems and if you take a look at it security is the foremost problem that we need to look at these networks and these sensors will be prone to cyber terrorism and vandalism and we need to come up with counter mechanisms to deal with it we need to look at data ownership and privacy we need to look at trust can we trust the source from where we are coming in and can the trust be crowdsourced can the trust today be sourced from the same people who are generating the data and also consuming the data how can we deal with social issues that come up when people are using such platforms when we create a lot of data we are going to also create this disconnect between people who have the data and people who don't have the data so we need to ensure that people who are gathering this data also have an obligation and right to share this amongst other people the cost of upgrade given the rapid development that is happening in this space i'm quite certain that we are going to invent this wheel many times over over the next few years we need to be quite cognizant about this cost of upgrade <coughs> centralized control or lack of centralized control distributed control control with private operation operate operators driving some of this all of this need to be looked at and managed and controlled the management of these nodes across millions can also uh, cause problems and we need to be managing it efficiently and telcos know exactly how to do this across millions of nodes so i think from a telco perspective i see a huge opportunity where they can use their core strengths of managing lots of devices lots of data and lots of networks to create services and solutions which can be used by our cities to make us smart i'm going to stop now and i'm going to open the floor for questions and we will take questions from now i have got the first question from saurav agarwal dear mr sumit mr my question is that how mature is india market or global market for such products there is a lot of talk but is there a real deployment and revenue uh, my question my answer is very short there is absolutely a market for this there is a lot of deployments that are already happening in smart meters in smart devices a lot of industries are collecting a lot of information today using such technologies they were not being sold under the banner of smart cities but you will be surprised to know that these projects are already happening there is a lot of revenue all we need to do now is to ensure that these are industrial grade there is lots of innovation that is going on we need to make it industrial grade we need to make it telco grade and this telco grade solution is what is going to make a difference trying to invent the wheel for data collection and data management over and over again by every solution provider is not efficient so we need to become a lot more efficient but it is selling there is a lot of business that is coming up and if you just open the newspaper there is at least 10 tenders every day which will require some sensor to make it smart every project every road project every housing project every airport project requires a lot of sensors every smart transport project that is going on is requiring a lot of sensors tracking measuring analyzing and we need to develop these skills in the country my next question is from raghavan it's about telco network coverage for human population is seen at nearly 96% in our country is there an equivalent figure for sensors existing and planned so if you take a look at gsm based communication technologies i think the answer is exactly the same we have got 96% coverage for people and devices which are there across the country 96% of our country is covered and therefore we'll be able to stick in a device anywhere in that coverage if i take a look at sensor network that number is up, uh, alternate sensor networks low power sensor networks zigbee sensor networks 
these are in single digits or even less. So we are seeing a huge potential of these sensor networks coming up which are alternative ways in which we can connect. Wireline networks are also there, we should not forget wireline networks as alternate means through which these sensors are going to connect. The third question is from Rohit Gupta. Could you elaborate what is Gaia's role in the overall smart grid framework? Do you offer sensors or a platform which integrates the sensors and other components? At this point in time, Gaia is entering the smart grid uh, arena by providing smart meters and by connecting these meters using a low power sensor network instead of traditional GSM based connectivity. So we are creating a platform which allows not just the power meter but many meters to connect over the same network and share the common data aggregation platform thereby reducing the end to end cost, the total cost of ownership of such solutions for the utilities. So our uh, current approach is to create a platform which allows multiple meters to get connected and offering the sensors which can read the meters. We are also moving into reading uh, meters which are connected at a substation level have on cameras, on door openers, on end to end monitoring of uh, the, the smart grid infrastructure. We have not done it yet but that is in our pipeline. <coughs> we have a follow up question from Raghavan. It says what are the few critical business models of uh, models critically needed to embrace the smart cities paradigm but not existing today. One big business model which is not existing today is sharing of data and the monetization of the sharing of information. I think this business model is required for our smart cities to succeed because if we don't have sharing of information we are going to remain in the silos that were there in the past. So I am quite uh, bullish about creating this common integration framework for the smart cities. We are creating a common integration framework. We are also creating a common data addressing framework which will allow the cities and companies to share information with each other. And this nomenclature is going to what uh, and the monetization framework is what is going to allow the smart city paradigm to succeed. We have got the next question from Ashutosh. Uh, Ashutosh's question is, uh, there are 20 cities that have been selected as smart cities. Different vendors are working on these. How do we ensure that there are SOPs across the cities and all solutions are scalable and up to mark? And note below is different state governments have different agendas. You are absolutely right uh, Ashutosh. I think this is one of the challenges that I see today of different cities working on different uh, technologies and different agendas. But you should remember that there are 4000 cities in this country and these 20 cities are just proof of concept of what is possible. We are not going to limit ourselves to solutions which are only in these 20 cities. There are various solutions that are available and I actually welcome different technology options to be tested and trialed in these different cities so that they become beacons. These cities are the beacons which will lead the way for 4000 other cities to adopt different frameworks. Globally there are many many cities who are also working on different solutions. Our cities should form partnership with these global cities. Our cities should part form partnership within themselves. Our cities should come up with a common sharing platform such that they can standardize and I know that DAT and DOT are working on various frameworks that Gaia is also helping today create the frameworks for M2M, frameworks for the IT infrastructure, frameworks for common language that the cities are going to use and Gaia is sitting as at the platform on these tables creating this uh, with DOT, with DATI and with Bureau of Indian Standards. So 
So I think this is what is going to happen. That we are going to see some of these frameworks coming up from uh, the cities and from our regulatory bodies helping the cities come up with common SOPs. The next uh, question is from uh, my friend Meena Bish. Uh, Meena, good afternoon. Uh, this uh, question is that M2M is part is M2M a part of smart cities? If yes, is there any approved guidelines on the working of the same from concerned authorities? Uh, yes, M2M is part of smart cities. There is a guideline that DOT has come out. If you go to the DOT website, this uh, this document is available. Uh, it has been authored and uh, coordinated with our uh, with DOT with Gaia being one of the lead uh, authors in there. Vipin Kumar, uh, he has uh, authored this document. It is available publicly. So please follow that. Next question is from Ashwini Kumar Nambiar. He says, "What are the major revenue streams for telcos in this smart city arena today?" The, the revenues that the telcos are looking at is in connectivity, is in broadband, is in providing ubiquitous Wi-Fi, is in providing smart solutions for the cities. But we have not seen a lot of them coming forward yet. They are also talking to companies like us to partner with us to create such solutions. So I am hoping that these telcos will come in and play in the larger ecosystem of smart cities. But today they are looking at uh, the connectivity options that are there and Wi-Fi. Raghavan has a uh, following question. Are, we, are existing policy regulation mechanisms adequate to have a stable environment for different players interesting, interested in investing in smart cities? Uh, I think th this, is a common, this is a common question that is asked. These policy and regulation are evolving. Is it stable? Uh, my answer is there is a framework which is being built. It is going to evolve. It is going to become stable over the next few months, years. I would say next year we will see a lot of these SPVs coming up and asking questions and changing and challenging this policy paradigm. My own background in uh, policy and being a PhD in public policy and management, I can see these questions are very very relevant and I encourage the cities to challenge the system so that we do come up with a stable uh, governing mechanism for investment. We are going to see the government invest in it first which has already happened for the 20 cities and is going to happen in the future as well but the investment is going to be enhanced from this stable policy environment. Next question is from Kamaljit Singh. Do you think smart cities as a national endeavor will work given the lack of conscious uh, consensus on what works best in various states. Uh, consensus is good and bad, uh, Kamarji. Uh, I think we are going to see a lot of alternate ways in which smart cities are going to come up. Cities need different things. What Raipur needs is different from what Jabalpur needs is definitely different from what is required by very advanced cities like Bhavaneshwar or Pune. And I'm going to see these cities come up with different questions and different answers. And I want the citizens to take charge of the agenda, not the administration, not the technology companies. Smart cities are going to work only when the citizens demand what they are looking for. The citizens demand a particular service. So I am hoping that citizens will take charge of this na national endeavor. And also, when there is a deadline and when there is a mission and we are working as a mission with deadlines, things happen in the country, in the world, wherever projects have been taken on as a mission, we have seen goals or at least some of them, sometimes most of them are being achieved. The next question is from Neha Suyal. He's, she says, uh, like you said, implementation of smart cities is already started. I could see smart meter installations come up, but I still do not see steps from OEM and operators for changes in telecom infrastructure. Is there any steps being taken? Can you give us a brief? If not, when will this, uh, when, what, if not, then what will be the plan? So telecom 
companies are not talking too much about it yet. They are still focusing on their SIM based solutions, but company like Gaia, company like Tata Communications is coming up with various alternative telecom infrastructure, which is going to allow uh, such smart meters to communicate in a far more regular basis, in a far more reliable way, such that meters are communicating not just to the utilities, but meters are communicating to you as well. So unless the meters are communicating back to you as the consumer of this service, I don't think we are going to achieve a smart city. Smart cities are when the person, when the citizen is in the center of the operations of the city. So I think we will need to move towards implementations and technology which puts the citizen back in the center. The next question is from Saurabh Agarwal. Dear Mr. Sumit, there is a big scope for many experiments, but reuse of technology is also a good way for us to grow. In your view, what is the best way forward and what kind of shortcomings do you see in Indian startups? Absolutely, experiments are good. Unless we do experiments, we will not know what the challenges are in the smart cities. In the cities, urban, large urban problems are different than solving problems that are inside the house or on your body. Our large scale urban problems have to be solved when you go out in the street and leave your sensor in dusty, hot environments, in flood prone zones and see how that works. Unless we do these experiments, unless we go out and test the waters, we will not know what these challenges are. There is a lot of reuse that can happen from experiments that have been happening overseas. We should definitely look at that. We should not ever assume that one project which has successfully happened one place can easily be scaled at a national level. There will be challenges in every city. There will be challenges in every state that we need to overcome. And the challenges that I see, shortcomings in Indian startups, uh, is a one pro product uh, solution where the person comes up with one product and assumes that the nation will suddenly start adopting it unless it solves a really important uh, problem that the country is facing. And there are various such important problems. And there is a lot of scope for many startups to come in and experiment and come up with solutions. India is a large country with a lot of problems and I think we need to look at various startups coming in and solving these problems. The next question is from Aditya Kumar. I submit which is the area where we see initial movements in terms of deployments. A lot of buzz around public safety. What are your views? There is definitely a lot of buzz around public safety uh, for uh, emergency buttons, for CCTV cameras, and the network that is coming up for all of these can very well provide us with a lot of information about pollution, uh, which is also a major problem about conservation of water, of conservation of green spaces, of uh, public uh, waste that is being generated. A lot of technology areas are there where I am seeing deployments. The nation has just launched a solid waste management and solid waste tracking project with BSNL and MTNL so that they can track vehicles, solid waste management vehicles across the country. So very soon every city has an option to deploy tracking solutions across the board. And these deals are already done. And I really encourage citizens of every city to force the city to deploy these monitoring solutions such that you know you will publicly know whether your garbage has been collected. Unless the citizens take this into account and force the cities to operate, force the cities to adopt these solutions which have been made available by the government of India, I think we are not going to see change. So these are where deployments are happening. The next question is from Nafisa. What are the different strategies adopted for security measures in the current agenda? Uh, there are very stringent security norms which the government is coming up with in DOT, in DATI, in TRI. We are going to see these things being introduced in the standards that are being proposed. Uh, I personally have the opinion that once you make something standard and make it publicly available, it actually becomes slightly less secure. So there will be different levels of security and a little bit of proprietariness which needs to be there. This is my personal view. 
uh, again as a, at a national level I'm sure standardization is the way to go but when you want to make something secure there needs to be a level of uh, technology that needs to be added which allow security to be operating at different levels which people just don't know about and this is what is going to make it really secure but it and that, those standards are also being discussed next question is from Satish uh, Kariveda he said sir today the IOT mandate is internet connectivity how about uh, exploring satellite signals to track the info which can be used in the defense sector for example army guards leave for field operations we don't have mobile network there during disaster times these guards go missing and difficult to trace them absolutely Satish I think this is one of the discussions we have had with border security forces already this is something that they are looking into there are people who are suggesting solutions for them for tracking uh, uh, the security forces and IOT being used as one of the ways in which uh, this can be done including satellite now satellite as you know uh, has been uh, uh, we have just launched our set last uh, one of the seven satellites we have we are going to have our own GPS tracking solution and uh, I would like to congratulate ISRO for uh, successfully deploying that we are going to see a lot of solutions coming up with satellite and satellite connectivity and the pricing of this going down uh, for defense certainly it is already available it is being used and we are going to see a lot of uh, non-defense uh, deployments as well where satellite is being used uh, one of the technologies that Gaia is putting on board is also to track devices behind satellite connections and our virtualization platform is going to allow GSM satellite wired Wi-Fi wi and uh, low power devices to connect under a common connectivity platform next question is from Aditya Kumar it says do you think restricting startups would hamper smart city deployment I absolutely agree with you Aditya that restricting startups would hamper uh, deployments and it would definitely hamper innovation I am one of the startups and I am going through uh, a level of restriction which we are trying to overcome by partnering with some established organizations but I hope the established organizations don't stifle innovation I hope that the government relaxes the norms for small medium innovative companies to come in and help the smart cities agenda I, I have had a lot of conversations around it and I hope that the government comes and changes the rules so far it has not happened and I really would encourage anybody from the government listening in or from any standard bodies listening in and for the cities listening in to encourage startups to come in and help you achieve your goal because big companies and large oligarchs as we have known in the past stifle innovation uh, big companies can look at big solutions but a lot of innovation is in the small startups the next question is from Sai Kumar which says thanks for the in-depth presentation how about the efforts being put in to develop competence across areas starting from electronics to IT to OT etc uh, absolutely Sai this is a this is a great question the country needs a different set of skills that are today not available uh, we at Gaia are put in, we have put in an education program which we are working with CEPT which we are going to work with uh, the BSNL we are going to work with several other large national well-known organizations to teach people what is smart cities and how IOT works how sensors work how to collect the data and I myself have given my, my uh, given time to spread the education agenda in this space so if you have a bright idea let's discuss offline and we can take it forward uh, as of now my involvement is uh, with the organizations I talked about my background in the CIO community we are looking at CIO's a foundation which has just been launched in Delhi to help CIO's come up with these technologies and help uh, spread uh, this agenda this is the last question I'm going to take from Ashwini Kumar again as a follow-up question how soon do you think telcos in India will be able to monetize this business model and tier one two three cities which should be uh, should be the first to implement it uh, telcos have already gone into this space
based from a GSM based, uh, GPRS based uh, connectivity options. They are already into this business. They are already there in every city uh, today. So I don't, tier 1, 2, 3 cities have already got the access to it. But we are going to see deployments of other alternate technologies first as pilots in large cities but large deployments happening in tier 2 and tier 3 cities which will benefit from this. So I have got my hopes in many of these cities which are asking us we are doing pilots in uh, for water metering in various cities. We are doing pilots uh, which are going to come up in large cities as well. So uh, I think uh, I cannot name these cities but you are going to see deployments happening very soon in tier 2, tier 3 cities. Uh, where these uh, connectivity options are going to be there. So I'm going to end the webinar right now uh, and you're going to have access to this uh, later on. So thank you.